Now, we need to understand the basic shape for this guy. Does he have, is he, does he have an x squared at all for the reciprocal part? No, so he should be cool. His shape should be just like the guy we were talking about before. But what am I doing with this? Tell me everything I'm doing here. Uh, right, this, the negative here tells me this guy will then become flipped upside down like this. Right, just turning it upside down. Good, what else do you see? This says we're going <coughs> up two. What else? Left three. Now, you guys have told me everything. Up two, left three. There's one piece you haven't talked about. This is my numerator, right? Is it a stretch or a compression? Well, this is what you need to be able to see this as. This is negative two times. 1 over x plus 3 plus 2, right? Isn't that what it is? So since this is larger than 1, it's going to stretch this guy. Now before I do anything here, I want you to tell me where are my horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Let's start with the horizontal asymptote first. Where was it? It was this horizontal line going through y equals 0. Where is it now? It's up to, so it's y equals 2. Your vertical asymptote was where? Zero. X equals 0, where is it now? X equals negative. X equals negative 3. I shifted it to the left 3 units. Put all of this in place, and then you can start with your graph. Is everybody okay with where my new asymptotes are? So I kind of circle this as though it's my new origin. I want you to think about where your original points were. Your original points were right here at 1, 1, 2, 1 half, and 1 half, 2, right? <coughs> but what am I doing with these guys now? You're multiplying them times negative 2, which means I'm turning them across that um, horizontal asymptote and I'm stretching them out. So when I flip across here, let's start with the easy point, the 1, 1. When I flip him over, he would have gone here, but then what am I doing? Times 2. Times 2, so he's going to go down further, so times 2. This guy was across here at 1 half. When I multiply that times 2, what do you get? 1. You get 1. Oh, wait. What? Oh, half. This guy right here is at 1 half 2 from that new origin point. So if I flip him down, he would have been down two units, but then I multiply by two to get what? Okay. You all right with that? You're taking those points and you're flipping them across and then doubling them. If I just flip them across, I'm going to have this right here, here, and here. But what? That's just the negative part, right? But when I put the 2 there, it takes their distance from that horizontal asym asymptote and it doubles it. Doubles it and doubles it. Do you all agree? Now, we've talked about how there's origin about the intersection of the asymptotes, right? Let me show you how that works and how you can get those other points. Notice that this point right here, I went to the right one down 2. Do you all agree? Instead of going right and down, I'm going to go what? Left and up. Right two, down one. I'm sorry. Right two, down one. I'm going to go left two and up one. This point was over one half, right one half, down four. So left one half and up four and you're going to still be able to create that symmetry about this intersection point. So when I connect these points, I get that part, and then I've got this one.
What questions do you have about how I got to this graph? I know there's a lot of stuff here, but there's stuff that you should not have to ask about anymore. You know how you go up, down, left, or right. I think the stretching is going to be new to you because you have to understand the new key points. Right? What's your question? Why is it stretched? Because if it was a negative, I would just be flipped upside down. But if I put a multiplier of 2 out there, that's stretching you in a vertical direction. Just like if I had two in front of the absolute value, it makes it steeper. It stretches that guy. Right, but if it's negative, I'm thinking it's less than one, so it should be. But what's its absolute value? The absolute value of that coefficient is larger than one, so it's a stretch. If you look back at the conditions that we made on that, we said if the absolute value of that coefficient is greater than one, it's a stretch. If the absolute value is between zero and one, it's a compression. And then here's the verification that what I have is right. Do you guys see how it matches up? You see here that I do have my vertical and my horizontal asymptote. 